What's up guys? So before this review gets going, I just need to mention something really quick. I primarily run a 3-4 defense and you know on Mudhead it says that this guy's a 4-3 linebacker but honestly I said it before and I'll say it again I never buy into that stuff you know I feel that if you can play in a 3-4 you know you can play in a 4-3 and I know so many guys would disagree you know there's always those big debates about whether or not this really works or not and the majority of people believe that 3-4 linebackers play better in a 3-4 system and vice versa but for me, honestly, I just don't see why they would. I mean, I don't think there's something in their, you know, card or, you know, anything like that that's going to make them play better or worse in the system. But that's just my opinion. So I'm just going to let you guys know that I do run a 3-4, but Mudhead said that this guy is a 4-3. I just want to put that out there because I know so many guys are going to bring that up because every time I bring out linebackers, they always bring that topic up. But anyways, here we go. KJ Wright, final edition, 98 overall dual style zone defense, man defense style. 6'4", 93 speed, 89 strength, 96 play rec, 97 hit power, 97 pursuit, 97 tackle, 93 excel, and 89 block shed. Also has a very nice 95 zone coverage and a 92 man coverage. Now that 95 zone is the main reason I picked him up to replace Sean Lee. No hate on Sean Lee though. Sean Lee is an amazing linebacker. And it, as you can see right here, 78 catch, so we'll rarely drop interceptions if it's thrown to him. But anyways, enough about these stats. Let me show you what this guy did on the field. So obviously something a linebacker needs to be good at is stopping the run as you can see here, getting tackles, getting off the block shed, chasing guys down and trust me KJ Wright was definitely very good at wrapping up and taking a running back down or even a wide receiver or quarterback or whoever it may be. And you know an outside linebacker needs to be fast without a doubt it has to be very fast to chase down these halfback tosses like this and get off the block shed and whatnot get the tackle now if a wide receiver tried to block him it was nothing he would block shed him like very easily if it was a tight end he was he would you know be on the tight end for like maybe like a second and then block shed the only guys who really gave him trouble were of course the offensive linemen on the halfback tosses which makes sense to me but even then you know he was still good at getting off the block as you can see here and stopping the run in the backfield and i've said in the past before you know i don't care if you run a three four four three nickel dime dollar quarter goal line if you want to if you're an outside linebacker i just need you to be an outside linebacker i just need you to lock down your side of the field and be effective but you know that's just how i feel about it i know so many guys will have their own opinions but Honestly, that's just how I feel about it. So, anyways, as you can see here, hit sticks. I think he got like 10 hit sticks and did actually cause one fumble. And normally that might not, you know, sound that great. But I have, I have reviewed so many guys with like 99 hit power, 100 hit power, and got like zero fumbles. So the fact that he was at least able to get one fumble out of these hit sticks, uh, hit sticks was good for me. So, definitely. Also, um, that right there was the fumble. At least with the hit stick, even if you don't get the fumble, at least you're getting the guaranteed tackle. That's how I always look at it. Silver linings, guys. Always about the silver linings. And as you can see here, you can definitely shoot the gaps to uh, kill the run. You can definitely use the rim, of course, to uh, stop the pass, as you can see right here. So even though I feel that he would be much more effective if you just let him do his own thing. But, you know, if you want to use rim, you absolutely can. As you can see right here, these are just some of the few bad moments where he did get or did let a few uh, passes and runs get by him. But, of course... I have had him for like a long time. I think I've had him for like five or six seasons, and these are really the only bad plays. And that's how I decide who to keep on my team. If I can have you for like four or five seasons, and you only have a handful of bad plays, you got a spot on my team. And this right here, in my opinion, is what he did best. Should not be much of a shock, but the zone coverage, man. 95 zone is no joke. He can lock down his side of the field, and he does lock down his side of the field. And it's very disruptive, and makes it very, you know, makes it that much tougher to throw to his side. Now I know he does have 92 man, and I did put him in man-to-man -man situations, but you know. So the way certain routes are nowadays man it's hard to um for a linebacker even with 92 man to keep up like with c routes and those crazy routes like that so i don't really recommend putting him in man you know just let him do his own thing at a linebacker you know zone or um pass rush oh speaking of pass rush was actually not that great at pass rushing you know so keep that in mind now right here compared to sean lee on the field very comparable now on paper you look at them and you would think Sean Lee is better, but honestly, KJ Wright or KJ Wright is a bit better at zone defense. I feel Sean Lee was a bit better at you know play rec and chasing down the run. But anyways, guys, whoever you pick up, you cannot go wrong with either of these guys. That's gonna wrap this up. Oh, and KJ Wright, absolutely top five linebacker, no doubt in my mind. My next review is gonna be the new Allen Robinson.